From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Arab vengeance. Although the Boers, who are of Dutch ancestry, have done much to develop Africa, the flag of Holland has never flown over any large segment of the dark continent. Today, Africa is divided into many states, ruled by the British, the French, the Belgians, the Spanish, the Egyptians. And only in the tiny province of Grutendal does a Dutch magistrate sit in judgment of the people. It was in the Grutendal courtroom that Tarzan had just completed his testimony concerning a minor dispute between two natives. Usually, when Tarzan had completed such a duty, he rushed from a courtroom, anxious to return to his jungle home. But now he remained, fascinated by the principles in the next case. Johan. Yes, Tarzan. That angry Arab, the one advancing toward the bench, isn't he Sheikh Abdul al Milikir? Yes, the one who is known as the terror of the desert. What brings him to Grutendal? I don't know, but our three police officers dragged him into court. He was involved in some sort of a dispute in the Arab quarter of the town. And that little girl, what is her connection with the case? Oh, I don't know. But she looks scared to death. Yes, that's what I was thinking. The Muslim veil that covers the lower portion of her face does not conceal her terror. We have a great problem with Arabs here. They resent Dutch rule. The child has the dark skin of the Arab, and she's dressed in Arab robes, but she has blue eyes. The bluest eyes I've ever seen. There has been much intermarriage. She's a fragile-looking little thing. Yeah, she probably hasn't had enough to eat. How old do you suppose she is? Oh, nine or ten, I guess. Yes, now, here comes the magistrate. Yes, Order! Order in the courtroom! The court is now in session. Magistrate Hans von Bork presiding and offering a fair hearing to all who will appear before him. So be it. The next case, Administrator of Justice... It is the case involving Sheikh Abdul El Malik Kerr and the townsman by the name of Kasim El Shihabi. And well might Kasim El Shihabi be called before the bar of justice for the indignity he has caused me to suffer. He will get his just desserts, even in a Dutch court. Sheikh Abdul El Malik Kerr, your reputation as a fearful marauder of the desert is well known, even in our tiny province of Grutendor. But we will not stand for any disrespect of this court or the government it represents. Hey. I apologize most humbly, Your Honor. The truth of the matter is that I am an honorable man. My anger is caused by the dishonesty of one I bargained with in good faith. You refer to Kasim? By Allah, it is to Kasim that I too refer. The cheater, the thief! In what manner did Kasim cheat you? I bought his daughter from him for 20 pieces of silver. I desired her for my bribe, and he had agreed to the price. Yet when I came to take her from his house, she bit and scratched and kicked me. Kasim did nothing to help me subdue her. You needed help? There was a crowd of a hundred of your citizens outside the house. They stoned my servants. They cut the thongs that tethered my steed so that he ran away. And they dared to threaten my life. Is this true, Kasim? Yes, Your Honor. You see, my neighbors did not approve of the sale of my daughter. But I gave my word. I have already spent the silver he paid me for the girl. I shall have to deliver her to him. Oh, no, Father. Please don't deliver me into his hands. Please, please, please. Uh, order. Order. Kasim, Shikur, you mean this small child is the one you discuss? Well, she's hardly more than a baby. She is of marriageable age, according to the customs of our people. And regardless of the findings of this court, I intend to have her as my bride. Johan, we have to do something to protect that child. This case does not concern you, Tarzan. And besides, I doubt that there is anything you can do to thwart the will of Sheikh Abdul El Malikur. He rules hundreds of fierce Bedouins, and the only laws he obeys are those he makes himself. <laughs> We 
We shall return to our story in just a moment. Tarzan and Johann Brinker, the administrator of justice for Grutendahl, and long Tarzan's friend, stood in the street just outside the courthouse. A short recess had been called, and people stood in small groups, angrily discussing the pros and cons of the case. With every passing moment, more people seemed to crowd into the small cobblestone square in front of a sun-whitened building. There were natives carrying heavy loads upon their heads, local merchants who were plainly of Dutch extraction, bearded Arabs who tethered their horses near where Tarzan and Johan stood talking. Where are they all coming from? I don't know. I thought the courtroom already held the entire population of the city. I don't like the looks of all these Arabs. Uh, they are a fierce-looking crowd. Well, you're the administrator of justice. Can't you question their business here? Uh, you don't understand. We are sitting on a keg of dynamite. There are perhaps a hundred Dutch in the city. There are twice that number of Arabs and three times that number of natives. If I started to interrogate those who have committed no obvious crime, I would jeopardize our entire position here. I see. Uh, well, it's time for the case to resume. Tarzan, I'd advise you to return to the chunker. Believe me, I mean no disrespect when I tell you that this case of the Bartha child does not concern you. Anything that disturbs my heart and my mind concerns me. I shall return to the courtroom with you. You do not have to push me. I am quite capable of walking to the front of the courtroom. Come, my child. We must face the magistrate again. He will not say that I have to go with the sheep. He must not say that. He must not. Order! Order in the courtroom. Court is now in session. Magistrate Hans von Bork presiding and offering a fair hearing to all who appear before him. So be it. Sheikh Abdul El Melik, Kasim El Shibhavi, please step up here. You too, little one. I come before you once again, Your Honor, but my patience is nearing its end. How much longer must I waste in this miserable city? I have paid for the girl, and she is mine. That remains to be seen. During the recess, I made inquiries concerning the child. No one knows much of her since you are apparently newcomers here. Is that correct, Kasim? It is true, Your Honor. We come from distant lands. How old is your daughter? She is... She is 16. 16? She looks hardly half that age. My dear, answer me truthfully. How old are you? One... One must do as one's father commands. One must do as the court commands. It is the law. Disregard any instructions your father has given you where it concerns a lie. Tell me your age. I'm... Eleven. Uh, Kasim, had we the facilities, I would make this child a ward of the court. Unfortunately, we have no s such facilities. You are well aware that according to Dutch law, a girl cannot be given in marriage until she is 16. I order you to return the money to the sheik and call off this unholy marriage arrangement. Even had Kasim not used the money for drink, I would not accept the money back. I have made a bargain. I have bought a bribe. I will not be denied. The court's decision has been reached. Kasim, take the girl home and guard her well. Next case. Your Honor, how can you do this thing? What? How can you tell this weak-livered man who would sell his own daughter for 20 pieces of silver to take her home and guard her well? Tarzan, what is your connection with this case? Until a moment ago, I was but a spectator, but your decision forces me to step forward. Certainly you know that the sheik who has terrorized a dozen communities in the past will not accept your decision. It is the duty of the administrator of justice and of the police to enforce the law. Your administrator of justice is both kind and brave, but neither he nor your three policemen can be expected to impose your laws on the man who has sworn to take this child as his bride. Do you honestly believe your men stand a chance? Yeah, I can answer that question. <laughs> three police against the terror of the desert? And his faithful followers? <laughs> yes, I can answer that question. You see, the last time a crowd of angry townspeople defended the child. The next time our noble sheik will bring enough horsemen to ride them down. He said as much. My only duty is to interpret the law. What more can I do? What more can you do? You call yourself civilized? 
I have known tribes of apes with more feelings. Now, see here. I have seen a monkey die from the cruel fangs of the leopard protecting a young one that belonged to another. I have seen a lioness brave death beneath the hooves of an elephant in order to save an orphan cub. What more can you do? We can do nothing, nor can you, Tarzan. My men surround the courthouse. I had hoped for a more peaceful settlement, but since you forced my hand, I will take my bride in my own way. Come, my little one. No, no, I won't go with you. You are no. my treasured bride. No. I am about to ride with you to my home in the desert. Please, Do not no. shrink from me. I warn you, no. I will not let you take her. You warn the terror of the desert? Come, my little flower. No, don't touch me. I'll touch you if I like your mind. Both and beg for it. Don't touch that child. Men, men of the desert, ride into the courtroom and deliver your sheik and his bride from the hands of the infidels. Save me. Tarzan, save me. the doors of the courtroom plunged a score of Bedouin warriors astride fine Arabian steeds. Their scimitars described great arcs, causing spectators, police, and witnesses to draw back in panic. And as people milled in hopeless confusion, one bearded Arab brought a riderless horse to the front of the courtroom. The terror of the desert mounted the animal in one swift motion, then leaning far over in his saddle, he attempted to lift his child bride onto the saddle beside him. But Tarzan was a split second quicker. He grabbed the child, threw her over his shoulder, and leaped toward a window. At last, splintered as he jumped through the window and down to the cobblestone street beneath. Pursue the infidel dog! Kill him! Do not be afraid, little one. If we can reach the jungle before they can they can ride us down with their horses, we'll be safe. Uh, the, the jungle's just ahead now. If I can just reach that first tree. Now then, hold tight, little one. I'm going into the upper level of jungle growth. The, their horses have come to a halt. They can go no further. There are no paths through the section of the jungle. Then, then we are safe? I doubt that any of the sheik's men can follow us through the jungle. Certainly they can never catch us here in the treetops. But, but we cannot remain in the treetops forever. No, and that is our great problem. For Sheik Abdul Al-Malik will not rest until he has reclaimed his property. You won't let him take me. He commands hundreds, and I am but one. But I will give my life, if need be, to keep you from him. What is your name, small one? I am called Aladina. Aladina? That is a curious name. It is from the name Aladdin, he who possessed the magic lamp. It is too bad you have no magic lamp. If I had one, I would summon the genie and command that he protect us. So that I could remain forever with you, Tarzan. If we can outwit the sheik, perhaps you can remain with me. I should like a small daughter. Alas, I know in my heart of hearts that I am doomed. That no matter how fast we run or how far, the cruel sheik will catch me. It is in the stars. <laughs> In just a moment, the exciting conclusion of Arab Vengeance. As Tarzan traveled north, nearing his seacoast cabin, he glanced down frequently at the small girl child he held in his arms. At times, she dozed gently as he carried her through the middle level of jungle growth... And then again she awakened to stare up at him with incredibly blue and trusting eyes. Perhaps he could keep her as his daughter. Perhaps he could permanently erase the terror he'd once seen in those eyes. He traveled more slowly than usual, lest he jar her. He took wide detours to avoid animals that might frighten her. And so it was that for once Tarzan did not outdistance his enemies. Sheikh Abdul El Malik Kerr and his band of fierce Bedouins were not far behind. Ah... You're awake again, Aladina. I... I had a nightmare. Instead of nestling within your arms, I was being held by... by him. It was horrible. Oh, no, no, no. Let's, let's not think of him at all. But I did think of him. And the thought caused my heart to hesitate and grow weak. Why are you stopping? <laughs> because I... I suspect the real reason for your weakness stems not from your heart, but your stomach. When did you eat last? I am not sure. It was before the court convened. Oh, but that's more than 24 hours ago. Ah. Where are you going? I see a small animal upon the ground. 
We shall both need food. You you aren't going to kill it. I dislike killing animals, but it's the law of nature. Hold the trunk of the tree tightly, Aladina. I shall return in a few moments. Please, Tarzan, do not kill this small antelope. I cannot bear to see another give his life for me. No, no, don't! <coughs> Now to tie Wappy's legs and toss the carcass over my shoulder. Ah. I was sorry to kill, but the child must have meat. She's so thin now that you can hardly. It was a giant horse. It came from that direction. After the man. After the end of that thought. Tarzan, it is the Sheik and his men. They heard your cry. I should not have sounded my victory cry. It came to my throat without thought. Come, Aladina. We must fly like the wind. Where can we go that they will not follow? My cabin is just ahead. If we can reach it before we're overtaken, we shall be safe. But Tarzan's devious path had placed him further from the cabin than the men of the Sheik. Seeming to sense his goal, they entered the small clearing that surrounded the cabin. They were a scant hundred yards from its door as Tarzan, hampered by the weight of the animal and the child, leaped from the trees and ran for the cabin's protection. The Arabs were on his heels, their arms reaching out for him, their cruel scimitars ready to wreak death. And with each step, they grew closer. But from some hidden source, new power flowed into Tarzan's limbs. He made one final desperate spurt and reached the cabin seconds before the enemy. Aladina, quick, help me bar the windows. You get that one over there. Climb up on the chest. I can do it. There. Now for this one. Shall we drag things up to the door? No, no. The timber will hold. Open the door. I seek Abdul Melako. Come on, Joe. Your commands do not impress me. The door will not yield to your fists, nor shall I yield to your words. You cannot remain within the cabin forever, Tarzan. And when you and my treasured bride emerge, we shall be waiting. <laughs> they gone, Tarzan? They've withdrawn to make camp a little distance from here. How can you tell? Their scent comes to me, but it is faint. They must be plotting something. Perhaps they plan to burn down the cabin. No, they could not draw close enough to do that, Aladina. My arrows can reach to the edge of the clearing. You, you wouldn't kill them. No, let's not talk about them anymore. Let's talk about you. Your father said you came from distant lands. Where is your home? I, I am not sure. Ever since I can remember... We have moved from one place to the next. Moved before I got to know anyone. Just you and your father? Yes. My mother is dead. I don't even remember her. I was too small when she... You must have got your blue eyes from her, huh? My father blames her for my blue eyes and for my size. He says if I were plump and brown-eyed, like some Arab girls, he could have secured many more pieces of silver for me. Ah, your father does not deserve you. You shall remain here as my daughter. I will rout the Arabs, though there be twice a hundred of them. But it will not be done in one day. No, of course not. And in the meantime, you must eat. It's now almost three days since a morsel has passed your lips. Come, Maladina, the meat is good. Truly, I am sorry, Tarzan. But I cannot eat the flesh of an animal I saw you kill. I tried, but something swelled in my throat. I cannot eat it. Would you eat fruit if I could secure it? Do you like fruit? Yes, I do. But you cannot go in. Oh, they can never catch me. You will be safe here so long as the doors and windows remain barred. Do not open them until I've returned. Tarzan? Is it Tarzan? I will open the door for no one else. Yes. Yes, Tarzan. You... you don't sound like Tarzan. I am injured. I, injured? Yes, clawed by a great beast. Unless you open the door at once, I shall bleed to death. Hurry, the door! It is you! Oh, the door, you're no good to struggle. There. Oh. Now I have it. Oh. Monsieur, Abu, Kazim, quick! No! No, you must take me away! Your plan works to perfection, great sheep. No. Truly, your brains are those of a wizard. There is no time for talk. Abu, come on. Tie the child. We will take her to El Basra, where fleet camels are raised. Oh, please, Sheik Abdul. I will work to repay the marriage price. If only... Keep quiet. Oh. 
Oh. Then we must be wary. If Arthur attempts to follow us, he must be killed. Oh, no. Death to the Nazareni. Death to the infidel Tassa. In the jungle, he is fearful. But once we have reached the desert, neither he nor any man can bring fear to Sheikh Abdul el Malakal. The bride I have paid for is now mine. <laughs> Aladina! Aladina! Gone. For the first time I know real hatred in my heart to take a child like that. Oh, the scent of man. And it's close. They've not yet gone beyond the reaches of my arrows. Ah, there. Just beyond the trees. Now, if I aim carefully. No! No, Tasha! Do not shoot! It is your friend, Johan! Johan! I have been traveling all day to reach you. I thought I might find you here. Are you in league with the Arabs? Of course not. But what happened? I went to obtain fruit for the child. I could find none near here. I was gone too long. They managed to take her from my cabin. I, I can't imagine how. Perhaps the man who claims to be her father engineered her capture. Claims to be her father? I have been investigating the case. Her father was an Arabian, a fine man, far different from Kasim, I assure you. At his death, Aladina's mother was forced to work in order to feed the child. Go on, go on, but quickly. Aladina was but an infant when Kasim came to the family where her mother left her while she worked. Kasim knew of Aladina's ancestry and persuaded the family that he was a kinsman. And then? Then permitted him to take the child, supposedly for an hour's airing. He never brought her back. Her mother, whom I have just left in Rutendal, has pursued them for years. So that is why they moved often. Yes, Always a step ahead of the distraught mother. She hasn't seen Aladina since she was a baby. The sheik and his men will reach the desert by tonight, and I suppose now Aladina's mother will never see her. Oh, she will see her. But I may need help, Johan. The Royal Dutch Legion masses in Grutendal now. They are at our disposal. Oh, they can guard her when we deliver Aladina there, but for now there's no time to return there. It must be you and me against the followers of the sheik. <laughs> All that day, Tarzan and Johann Brinker traveled through the jungle. And that night, they hired camels at El Basra and continued to follow the spore of the swiftly moving Bedouins. Perhaps, as the sheik had boasted, Tarzan would have been no match for him on the desert had the sudden sandstorm not begun to swirl and dance across the endless plain. Great masses of sand were hurled against them. Their animals staggered before the weight of the shifting mountains of dust. The wind and the sharp sand particles whipped Tarzan and Johann's faces and stung their eyes. But still they kept on, heads lowered, jaws set in grim determination. Tarzan, I know how determined you are, but certainly no one can keep going in the storm. We'll keep going. But even Arabs make camp in such a wind. That's what I'm counting on. Arabs stretch their canvas so that the sand will pile up against it and form a protection. Yeah, that's right. They gather their camels into a circle. Johan, you can hold our camels while I stampede theirs. Then I can round the embankment of sand that protects the sheik and his men without being seen until the last moment. It's a foolhardy move. Yes, so foolhardy, no one could be expected to make it. That's why it has a chance of succeeding. Johan, look! That camp ahead. Uh, you're right. The bank of sand. The camels in the circle. Hold our camels as best you can in this wind. Good luck, Tarzan! shall head for Grutendahl and for Aladina's future. Well, Aladina, the city of Grutendahl lies ahead. The city. And my mother. I, I guess I can't be your daughter after all. Are you still determined to leave us here, Tarzan? Yes, Johan. The sheik and his men, if they live, are still searching for their camels. And in Grutendal, Aladina will be protected by your Royal Dutch Legion. I... 
I shall miss you, Tarzan. And I shall miss you, little Aladina. But maybe someday, like Aladdin, from whom you got your name, you shall secure a magic lamp. And when you rub it, perhaps I shall appear instead of a genie. We shall return with a few words about our next exciting story of Tarzan. A potentate with thousands of fanatical followers. A son trained to rule with the same relentless will as his father. Experts skilled in the art of torture. A snarling pack of panthers trained by man to hunt for man. These are the elements that go to make up Tarzan in captivity. Our next thrilling story of the Lord of the Jungle. Tarzan, the transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Oh.